and rolling. Can we start? Yes. Cool. Uh, so hello everybody, I'm Frank Cohen. Uh, I'm the founder of a company called Starling Watch. And uh, next to me is Terry Hart. Um, and uh, I'll let Terry do her own introduction. Go ahead. I'm a Disney Imagineer. How many know what that is? Yay! Then I don't have to explain. Yeah. When I met Terry, it was about two years ago, and I was starting up um, Starling as a company that was making an experience. Basically, I had written a time travel romance novella, and then uh, one of the characters is as I'm, as I'm dressed today, and uh, he invented these really cool pocket watches that have this kind of light-up system in them. And I showed it to Terry and I said, I really am interested in doing something that extends the story into the packaging. And so we, we uh, produced this really cool uh, box which showed off the characters uh, from the story. And at the time I said to Terry, I said, well, I want to do something really fun with the box. So it's not going to be your normal box. Instead, this box will form a, a circle and I want to have the panels on the outside of the circle have, say, sculpted character references from the story, right? Sounds so simple to do, right? I have been coming to Maker Faire since it got started, and I thought, okay, I'm really a software guy, but this um, 3D printing stuff seems really pretty cool and easy to use. Um, how hard could it be, right? So when I met Terry, she had just bought her first replicator too from MakerBot. Her idea was to start up a business where she could take her incredible sculpting talent and be able to produce things like the Olaf character from Frozen, uh, or Remy from uh, 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 from, Ratatouille. from Ratatouille, thank you. And what she was interested in doing is to sculpt once with tr traditional materials and then be able to produce, say, 100 Remy's and then sell them as a limited ed edition collectible. And she, she bought the printer, right? And she looked at me with frustration in her eyes and she said, I can't figure out how to deal with like the moray pattern that's coming out when the thing is printing. I can't figure out Actually, how to get... Actually, I got frustrated with the owner. Yeah. Because the owner told me it was going to be perfect. Right. It was going to cock these up. They were going to be beautiful. I could paint them and they would be lovely. And as you know, several years back, yeah. uh-uh. Yeah. So she, she so said this to me. So it was extra me. work. Extra work. Yeah. Which, how many makers need extra work? <laughs> not, right. me, not. No. And she was Did asking me like, it. okay, Frank, you've been in the industry for so long. What am I missing? And I told her, yeah, there's about 60 missing steps here. Right? So the reason that we're talking today is because Terry kind of represents a, a type of artist who's used to working in traditional tools and materials. And there is a huge gap from what her talent is to being able to do short run things that are produced that you can actually sell. Right? Yes, yes, okay. yeah. So I have some questions for Terry. What the first one is, what did you use for traditional sculpting? So I am a sculptor. Some of the things you're seeing here I actually created. So the box I created, the pink you see is wax. I work a lot in wax for high detail and kind of a fruitcake like that. The boxes are this big. So I work really small and then I can work really big. But the point is, is I work in two mediums I love, which is Shabbat clay, and also I like to work in wax. I learned how to work in wax at Mattel. And with wax, you go hot, cold, hot, cold. And then I cast it. So it's not injection molded, and it's not 3D printed, because 3D printing at that time, well, even now, it's a bit too slow, and it's also got too much more. But as I walked around here, I noticed that there's a lot less moray, so I'm feeling a little bit better. There's still time involved, but it, you know, in just a few short years, I'm seeing how quickly things are evolving here at the Maker Faire. Right. So this is your second year. My second year. Yeah. So when you're the, amazing. So what what do you see as the, the use of kind of manufacturing techniques, and um, what what are its limitations currently? Well, you're you're mostly going now from. Say, uh, wax or from clay into say cast resin, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what what yes. are the what are the those kind of manufacturing techniques? My are, work is that I do a lot of limited edition sculptures of a hundred or less. They're usually only about yay big for collectors because collectors like to collect a lot of stuff. Sometimes it's Disney and sometimes it's like the like you saw the uh, 
the uh, nativity yeah. is bigger. But the detail is what I do. So that's the problems I've been having with a lot of the 3D printers that I've seen. They're not getting the detail for me. Or they're coating it and with a with a wash and they're erasing it. And that doesn't help me either. So the coating with the wash would be uh, using right? alcohol yeah. or, or some other material that removes the moray pattern. But you also lose the detail. Yeah, and, so and casting, as I know, you're naughty. So I'm with you on this. Casting is what gives me the detail. I have a human who casts it and he knows exactly how to get my eensy teensy weensy detail of which there's a lot. If you look at the pink thing that comes up here, it's only this big. So I'm looking at fingernail size detail. If you've ever worked with a polymer clay or Sculpey, once it gets below three inches, it starts to break down because the components are too bulky to get that detail, which is why I moved to wax. Right, okay, so what you're seeing here is the finished piece after it's been cast using resin, but how much is a typical resin mold costing to, to get you into production? It kind of depends on the project. So for Frank's project, if it had been a square box, it would have been a lot less expensive. But he decides to do a trapezoid that interconnects with the other ones, and that shot the price up. Yeah, why should Artists make it call easy? that the what if. What, it, wouldn't it be cool if? So if you're an artist and you say, wouldn't it be cool if? Usually the price goes up and your days of working on it go longer. Gosh, it'd be great if I could see through the rib cage to the bony spine if I'm making the skeleton. That's another day and a half of sculpting and a little in the mold. So, yeah. That's cool. Okay, now as far as the sculpting materials go, what, what uh, kind of detail in the piece itself concerns you? I mean, we're, we're seeing pieces up here where the neck is like maybe an eighth of an inch thick. Yeah. So what, what are, this. What, of the sculpting materials that you've got, what kind of concerns you? Well, in many cases, if I'm doing a 3D, it could break there, it could snap there because it's too weak. So when I worked with, for Mattel, I made a tiger and I did a slender neck on my tiger. And when they tried to put it through and pour the rubber in, whenever they pulled out the rubber tiger, his head kept ripping off because his neck was too narrow. So then they asked me to thicken it. So what I'm learning by communicating with 3D printer makers here and people who 3D print is what is it do I need to do to do my work so that I can get a better 3D print and what, how can you come chose me and help us to find a happy medium so that I might be able to use this. Right. And uh, you know, one of the things that you might not have noticed is that there are armatures in these sculptures that you're building, right? In some sculptures, yes. Yeah. Because when you're sculpting, in Sculpey or wax or whatever, now wax you don't really need an armature unless you're going to sell your wax. Because then they're going to break it. I don't often sell my waxes, but Disney will often hire me to sell my wax, sell my clays, and sell the finished resin piece, which is what I cast it in. Does it feel like you're sending off your baby out, you know, into the world to be harmed? No, I think like many artists, now maybe many of you get attached to what you're doing, and I do too, but I create so much. I think a lot of times artists have financial problems because we kind of just make money. Oh, there's another, there's another 2,000, there's another 3,000. Because you just sculpt something that's amazing, and then people go, ooh, want it. And then you go, okay, I'm now no longer bankrupt. So, and if you're someone who is an artist who is broke, then you got to stop listening to that voice, because that's the problem. You have the ability, I'm sure all y'all know, to create something amazing. If not, you haven't walked around. Because these people are blowing me away, and I make a really good living as an artist, not just for Disney, but my own work. Yeah. So, so. And actually, your your business at this point is more than just Disney. I mean, you're yes, you're, now, you're now in a position to design products for people who need that kind of design work, and then you're unique in that you can go from those designs into actually something that is ready to be produced, right? Yes. Yeah, so I even do a training where there are people who have a business and they want to they want to entertain kids and the kids get bored so I say because I'm a Henson puppeteer I help you design a character for you to understand to puppeteer and then I teach you how to use it and a lot of times when you're doing a let's say 
math presentation where all of the kids you're around are going, if you have a goofy character that's sitting here talking, you know, what's two plus two? Three. Then the kids are very much engaged. So people hire me to create that character for them and then they can use it in their business, they can use it in videos, they can use it on their advertising and everything. So I create all different kinds of prototypes for one person or a million people or a corporation or an individual. It just depends. Right. So these are really experiences that she's building that she has the talent to go from the concept that she can develop into the actual piece that then might get printed on the 3D printer. So 